All right, B. Who are you and what's your game? Someone get him! Well, if it isn't my dear old chum, Mr. Disraeli. Now, Prime Minister, which of your friends is about to stab you in the back? The Corrupt Practices Bill is a vital step in reforming our government. If the majority party is allowed to dictate the results of contested elections, we can scarcely call ourselves free. If we yield up our rights bit by bit to the courts, we can scarcely... Lucky on trying. Oh, 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 whatever shall I do? I'll do anything you want if you save me. Oh. Anything. This cannot be tolerated. You would rather throw your body upon the gears of progress than surrender one iota of power. By God, Disraeli, you are a fool. I'll not stand idly by and watch you drag parliamentary privilege through the muck. No, certainly not. You'd rather return us to the yoke of tyranny? Let me go. I'll make Perhaps it while we're at it, Mr. Gladstone, we could repeal Magna Carta and return the crowd to the right. bloody stuck. Oh, I'm shocked. I'm bloody desperate. Oh, God, old mother. Oh, God, old mother. Oh, God, No respect for other people. I hope they fall over and dash their brains on some slanderous accusations. I'll make you just let me go. I'll not stand for it. Then I shall obviate the requirement. Good evening, sir. B, I presume. Pleasure to meet you, B. B. My name's Herbert. And why are you following the Prime Minister? It's just a job, sir. Some old bloke paid me.
Bloody hell! Where did you come from? Well, I was born in Crawley, but that's by the by. Who are you working for? Oh, I never got his name. Uh, old chap, big moustache, wore some kind of uniform. Who's ours, maybe? What's his game? Please, you'll kill me. And a three-story drop will shatter your legs and send you to the workhouse. Difference is you can run from him. Tomorrow! Oh, my lads are going to attack the Prime Minister's carriage on the way to Parliament. Oh, oh, oh. Perfect. So much for the house call. I have to find a way into that carriage. meaning of this? Who the devil are you? Prime Minister, I'm your new bodyguard, Jacob Fry. I wasn't informed of any new bodyguard. Who's your commanding officer? Let the boy speak, Dizzy. <laughs> Madam, apologies. But we've learned of a threat on your life. And the Met thought it best to move quickly. Threat? What sort of threat? <gasps> that sort. Well, if you excuse me a moment. So fast, Your Excellency.
It was Gladstone. I bet my life on it. This is perfectly in keeping with this distinct lack of character. Show yourself, Gladstone! Show yourself, you feckless muck snipe! Who's a good horse? You are. Well, he's hardly going to be in the van with a gunshot, no, not is he? about Gladstone, young man. I assure you, madam, Gladstone is innocent in this. But he tried to kill my husband. Well, we'll look into Gladstone. Perhaps you can help me with another inquiry, madam. A gentleman with ties to Parliament, older, wears cavalry uniforms and has a large mustache. You seem like a rough and ready sort of fellow, Mr. Fry. <laughs> well, yes, I am, actually. And are you familiar with the poorer districts of our city? Roughly. Wonderful. As it happens, I've been eager to tour the Devil's Acre. If you were to escort me, I'd be happy to assist you in your inquiry. That strikes me as a dangerous idea. Then it's settled. Come back here to Downing Street tomorrow night, eight o'clock sharp. Good day, Mr. Fry. But I... Good day, Mr. Fry. Madam? Mr. Fry. Ready to take the air? Devil's Acre should just be coming alive. I am afraid I must cancel our engagement. The lawn is crawling with scandal-hunting journalists, and I simply cannot be seen in the company of someone so... I'll see them off. You follow along when it's clear. Yes, yes. Uh, be gentle, won't you? The press are notoriously touchy about any violence to their person. Ha 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 I'll barely ruffle a hair on their heads. Shh, Desmond. That's yours, if you can get those chaps over there to follow me. Right you are, sir. Blimey! Look! It's Squire Bancroft! Best lead them astray before they tear me to shreds. Mr. Bancroft! Mr. Bancroft! What's coming up next for the Prince of Wales? Will you be performing Mr. Robertson's new work? Who will you be playing? Any comment on the notices for the play? to deal with the liberals. Now. Keep moving. There, in the cart, is the yes, Prime Minister's yes. wife. I really must not be seen here, Mr. Fry. Hold 
on, girl. Whoa, now! what the Devil's Acre has to offer. Is your dog quite all right? Oh, Desmond's fine. He's just not over fond of strangers. Or cats. Do you know this gentleman is a, oh, what was it? Yes, a costermonger, of all things. Remarkable how the working classes occupy themselves, isn't it? Very industrious, I'm sure. Shall we go?
Mr. Fry. Look at those two. Uh, yes, they, uh, they seem to be, um... I've been married twice, Mr. Fry. I'm fully aware of what they're doing. God bless them. Someone, please! What sort of meat is that man selling? Best not to ask. Why? Is it something dreadful? <gasps> is it rat? I don't mean to be indelicate, given the present company. But another name for it is Bow Wow Mutton. Here we are, the old one-ton pub. So, this is a pint, is it? Huh? Remarkable. <sighs> Nice doggy. Good boy, Desmond. Hand over the mutt. You'll change your tune when me and my friends find you. Now then, Desmond, to get you back to your mistress, whom I've just left entirely unattended in one of London's most dangerous pubs. Well, if you never told your father how you felt about him, how was he supposed to know? I never thought of it that way. I suppose deep down we all just want to be loved. Just so. Mm. Here, have a sweetie. Oh, Desmond and Mr. Fry, I'd like you to meet... Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't catch your name. John the Tosser. Charmed. I think we'd better get you home. Right you are, Mr. Fry. Come along, Desmond. <laughs> well, well, well. If it isn't the dog walker. <laughs> now, let's not do something we'll regret. and enlightening evening, Mr. Fry. No, thank you, madam. Perhaps now you might tell me about the man in the Hussar's uniform. Quite right. Lord Cardigan is the gentleman you seek. Tiresome man. Always blathering on about his military adventures. Do you know where I might find him for a private conversation? I do indeed. He's in town now, as it happens. <laughs> campaigning against the corrupt practices bill. Perhaps Three you could five. catch him in the Palace of Westminster. Oh, do be careful. The government could ill afford another scandal. I assure you, I'll be very discreet.
Your stop, madam. My stop. <laughs> How delightful. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for a splendid evening, Mr. Fry. I shall be sure to speak highly of you to Dizzy. <laughs> oh, yes. What's this nonsense about needing a password to see Lord Cardigan today? Relax. I've got it in my pocket. Look sharp, men. Allow no one past unless I authorize them. Cardigan has gone too far this time. I've a mind to contact Scotland Yard myself. Come here, gentlemen. I thought us united in opposition against this perfidious law. Pardon me, gentlemen. Sergeant Freddie Aberline of Scotland Yard. Where might this scandalous activity be taking place? Oh, yes, yes. It's, uh, uh just this way. Follow me, Sergeant, but discreetly, if you would. 
One doesn't like to be seen airing a fellow member of Parliament's dirty linen, what? <laughs> I'll be very discreet. Usually I would be in disguise, but my clothes all fell into the Thames. You're going to be... Password, no passage, sir. Password. Balaclava. Come in. Ah, bring us... Now then, <clears throat> let's discuss this like... Je Good God! Who the bloody hell... Oh, shut up. Should fall not on the gloried fields of Crimea, but to an assassin's blade in the very halls of power. Are you finished yet? Take your bow, knave, for you have managed what no Russian battery, what no Indian tiger could achieve. Claim your trophy, and may you choke on it. Yes, but do tell me more about Balaclava. Farewell. Farewell, dear Britannia! Your dawn shall be dimmer that the Earl of Cardigan sees it not. God save the Queen and the Eleventh Hussars! What a prick. Thank you. 
Apart from the death squad on our tail, apart from that. Backup's on the way. Why are you pushing yourself so hard? It's not your job to fight Templars. I had this colleague. He was our boss's son. I didn't much care for him at the start. Everyone treated him like he was so bloody special. To me, he just wasn't invested in, in, in anything that didn't affect him personally. But I was wrong about him. He became my friend, put himself through hell, and he saved us all in the end. So I reckon, well, I can't apologize to him, but I can, I don't know, I can try and live up to his example. You are a good assassin. Holy jeez! Hello. It has been too long. Galena! Blimey, I have not seen you since we blew up that lab in Paris. Uh, there were many explosions and you screamed like a baby. Bishop tells me Otzelberg is here. I will kill him for you. Super. Great news. Now, if you wouldn't mind keeping watch, I am going to lie down and die now. Rest. We have a big fight coming. Sean and Rebecca are safe for now, but we're still relying on you to find us that shroud. A letter? For me? That's the end of sequence 7, so thank you for watching guys. Oh, peace.